They're all right there, everyone. How's it going? So I am here with um, a good friend of mine, as you, you've heard him before on the podcast, uh, Mr. Scott. Hello. So um, today we're just going to talk about like mental health. I'm going to give Scott a, a few questions, well, quite a few questions about it, and he'll answer them the best he can. He really knows his stuff on this type of thing, you know. Um, we've done one with Billy and all that, and that was good, but uh, it's good to get more perspectives on it, you know, and hopefully... Um, it might help some people um, feel better about their situation or, like, they might, you know, Scott's what Scott's been through, like, with his mental illness, maybe it might make people feel like they can relate a bit, you know, and that they're not alone in the struggle. Yeah, hopefully. So, anyway, then, first question. So, you know, with, like, mental health problems, do you think something has to happen to spring it? Um, not always. So someone... it, it, it it normally does, like there normally is a catalyst that starts it off, but it can also happen from just doing nothing, like feeling unfulfilled. Mm. Like if you have nowhere to go, it's going to start setting in, you know? So like people not having goals and all that? Yeah. Like it's one of those, so if, you re- if you have a goal and you reach it, you why do you go from there? Yeah, exactly, and I guess. it starts to set in from that. But most of the time, there's a catalyst that starts it off. Yeah. Because so. I suppose it's like Kurt Cobain. He had basically everything, it seems like. But he said... He said... Something like... Um, I've, when I was young, I dreamed of getting this guitar from this guitar shop. Because I didn't have the money. And now I could buy the whole guitar shop. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. But it depends right. what... what other goals you have it's good to have some backup goals i guess yeah one advice i remember hearing and this is actually quite a good one is if you're gonna set yourself a goal make it unachievable because once you've achieved it where do you go from there yeah that's true so like so if man... you're gonna set yourself a goal deliberately make it so you can't achieve it because then you'll have something to work towards all the time. That is amazing advice. I've never thought of that. So maybe like with this podcast, achieve, try and make it as big as JRE. It'll never happen, but it's good to strive for stuff, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if it, it did happen, to work towards. if it did happen, I'd be shocked. Yeah. But anything can happen, so who knows? Um, yeah, if, if you're putting the time in and, we're, and working towards it, you should get it eventually. Yeah. This is is just coming down to can you get your big break or are you certainly like jumping? Yeah. That's the thing with a lot of, like, channels and, like, streams and all that is it's normally a big break that happens where suddenly a bug will find you and that's what normally gets you going. Mm, 100%, man. Yeah. So it's normally finding that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Would you say, like, you know, bad behaviour, would you say it's, like, inherited or acquired? Um, it's another one of those can be either all. Because Shay Frillis brought was, this debate up and it was amazing when he talked about it. Yeah, like, in some cases it can be de- inherited if the pe- if the people raising you or the people you're around are acting bad because you distinctly will, like, act as well to try and fit in or, like, because that's all you know. Yeah. But at the same time, people could be born in, like, one of the most loving, like, mm-hmm. supportive, like, groups. Mm-hmm. And still, like, act out and, like, act differently. So, it, it, one of those, it can be either or. Yeah. Most of the time it is normally, like, you've got something that, like, drives it. Mm. I mean, there is, I I do believe in good nature, you know, but as you said, there's people who have perfect lives who just turn into absolute fools. Yeah, exactly. So, it's like, you know... It, it just depends. It's partly the people you're around, but it's also how you act. There's so many people who have been dealt crap hands and they've still been a nice person, you know? Yeah. Like, unbelievably crap hands, man. I mean, we know some people and it's like, man, how are they so jolly, <laughs> you know? It's yeah. Unbe- it's just... That's, like, the mother bed, like, the people who can smile in the face of, like, terrible acts are the people like that it's hard to explain but if you're going through a bunch of shit or have had a bunch of happen and can continue to smile like you're one of those people like that people need to look to you know what i mean 
Yeah. Because it is hard to smile through everything. So true, man. Like, these sort of people who can get through it are just an absolute, utter inspiration. Yeah. What do you think about these... I hate getting my personal opinion in the questions, but to put it politely, these utter idiots who say, like, oh, showing emotion is so weak, blah, 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 all that crap. Okay, um, I'm going to throw out some, some things here real quick uh, with that one. Um, so, this is going to play into, like, my answer to the question. So, you know, like, with suicide? Yes. Yeah, I know this seems like a 180 from the question. Yeah, but yeah. Actually, it's we'll, like... We'll lean into it, trust yeah. me. Yeah. So, going off the statistics of suicide, um, hmm. women seem to attempt it more, but men succeed at it more. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. Hmm. And it's because, like... So, this could apply to either side, but this seems to happen mostly on the guy side, but, again, it can literally apply to either based on who you're around. But, like, it's what the reason, like, men seem to actually, like, follow through with it more is because we're taught not to show emotion or showing emotion is weak. Yeah. So you just kind of bottle it up and it eventually, like, hits a point where you can't contain it anymore. And because you can't, because you're told you're not allowed to talk about it, like, you eventually just hit a point where you just give up. Yeah. So, in my opinion, not being allowed to show emotion is fucking stupid. Million that's percent. That's what leads to, like, for example, a lot of terrible people, like body feeders and that, and like people who commit and people who commit suicide and all this, is because they're not allowed to show emotion. Yeah. Or they're, or they're tra- taught from a young age that they're not allowed to mm. because, like, for this or that. Well, I'd say I'm a lot more sympathetic towards people who want to kill themselves than people who beat up their wives or their partners. Oh, I know, but, like, it is normally what breeds wife beaters. Yeah, they didn't... abuse people in general. It's normally because they can't show their emotion any other way because they're taught they can't. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of... It's it's just ridiculous, really. But the problem is, when if a bloke says, oh, I'm feeling down about this and whatever... I mean, obviously... With both genders, there is like fakers, obviously, but if someone, if someone's really genuine and trying to put themselves out there, and you're just like, oh man up, you bloody wimp, oh that's a bit, oh you have anxiety, that's so wimpy and feminine, yeah. oh it's like you're not fucking helping the fucking situation, you piece of shit. You know, it's so yeah. unfair when people are like that. But you, you sort of would assume like that they're probably feeling hurt deep down, but they don't want to admit it. They want to always look strong all the fucking time. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is an R-rated podcast. I'm going to be venting on this because there's some pieces of shit out there who are just annoying. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, Scott, feel free to swear because this is, this is an adult one. No kids need to be listening to this. Hopefully you don't have to deal with mental health or anything. Uh, uh, yeah. if you like a kid listening to this which I'm guessing you're not I don't think there are I don't think there are any kids that listen to the podcast ho- hopefully hopefully but it can happen yeah true well it's just swear words we're not saying for that kid to go out and swear but yeah oh yeah I, try to... I mean if anything kids are probably some of the people need to be taught about this shit the most actually true alright then yeah yeah if you're a kid then watch it but we are going to swear a lot so uh, keep the headphones in but yeah yeah because I just can't help it. This is, even though I haven't ever had depression myself, I've had quite a bit of anxiety. I'm not even going to lie. And there has been. Anxiety is something everyone has. Like, yeah, we're if all you on the spectrum. You haven't got it, you're fucking lying. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has it. I said it's to you. Just like... I said to you and Billy in the car once, I was like, we're all on the spectrum, man, when we were driving back from seeing the Joker film. Because that brings yeah. up a lot of mental health stuff. I was like, we are all on the it spectrum. Does. Yeah. But, um. Like. Oh, sorry, what were you going to say? I was, gonna say like, I was just going like, to say about like the Joker movie. Like That one's actually really good. Cause, like, it can show like what happens if a person is just dealt a like, constant bad hand and no one helps. Well, he also probably had like autism or something or some serious, like, severe problems in the head. And, yeah. um... And the whole, all of society just treated him like crap. I, you were in the... The thing is, when we watched it, when me, you and Billy watched it, you, I actually screamed, yes, when he shot that person. I was so happy. I was just like... Yeah, I remember that. 
And the thing is, I was the only one who was screaming. I was like, yes! Which um, isn't the best behaviour. I don't condone actually people getting shot, but it's just the story, and those are those Wall Street buffs deserved it, let's be real. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. They, they did. I mean, if you're kicking the shit out of some bloke with mental health problems, or anyone, what do you expect? Of course, people are going to defend themselves. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah, how you... Um, yeah, should Can... we go to the next question? No, no, no I was just going to say quickly, because you brought up our women um, attempt it more and blokes actually go through with it. I'm not being sexist or anything. I'm sure things can happen with either gender. But it feels like um, women are more like, they're not going to say to each other if they're mates, they're not going to say, oh, shut up, you big wimp. I'm masculine, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, like, that, that's why I say women attempt it more, but men, but men go actually go through it more. It's because, like, a girl's friendship circle tend to be more, like, supportive and emotional Yeah. to a guy's friendship circle where if, like, he comes out, like, trying to talk about, like, He's feeling like suicidal or depressed or just. Most of the time, the guys are gonna laugh at him. Yeah. Like, oh man, up your plonker. Yeah, but um, just a heads up: if you want to email ALP, I'm happy to listen to any of your problems. Like seriously, no matter what they are, no matter how messed up they are, as long as you didn't kill or rape anyone, I'm I'm there for you, mate. Whoever's listening or anyone, yeah. any of my mates, I'm here for you. Or anyone. Yeah. I might um, give some advice at some point in the podcast if the question flows into it properly to help with this stuff because, like I said, so I've got some experience I can easily bring out that can yeah. hopefully help people. Mm-hmm. Um, would you say, like, depression can lead to other mental illnesses? It can. Um, more often than not, anxiety and depression tend to get packaged together. Like, if you get depression, it more often than not you'll have anxiety as well yeah now, you can have anxiety about depression but most of the time depression if you get depression you will have anxiety as well the two tend to come together mm. and yeah. like anxiety is another one that i feel like people don't take as seriously as they should because th- this is the way i'm going to put it here anxiety to a degree is both better and worse than depression Mm. Anxiety feels worse in the moment, but depression is worse o- worse overall because it's a very slow burn. Well, the thing is, you can, like, do stuff to relax with anxiety. Exactly. Like, that's why I say, like, at, at the time you're having an anxiety attack, it feels way worse than, like, de- than having depression. But only for, like, a small moment. Whilst depression, it's a very slow burn that, like, slowly wears you down. Yeah, man. Until you hit a point. Hmm. Um, I actually asked Billy about this one. Um, what do you think when there's people who say, I've got depression, I've got depression, I've got depression, wanting all the attention but they don't want to get diagnosed? Because you said something really interesting to me about this when I've talked to you about it in the past. Ah, uh, yeah. I remember this. Okay. So, like, there's probably going to be people who disagree with me in the comments. If so, like, you're welcome to and feel free to, to say why you disagree. Like I said, like everyone's opinion is welcome here. But people, like this is as someone who's had depression and has quite a few friends who have gone through it or are going through it. People with depression don't talk about it or don't want people to know. So if someone, like, if someone comes out and tells you they have it, the odds are, like, so there's ways you can tell if someone's faking it for attention to if they actually have it. If a person actually has it, the odds are they'll tell you in private. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they want as few people to know as possible. And they will only bring it up the one time unless they have to bring it up again. They won't bring it up constantly because they don't want people to know. Or unless someone questions them about it. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing. Like, people going through depression... They don't want people to know they're so, like they're going through that. They want to keep it quiet. Yeah. So the odds are like it. There's there's, there's some clear telltale signs if someone is faking it for attention, and that's if they bring it up all the time. Mm. Like it like you can just be laughing with your friends and mate, and they'll suddenly bring up I'm depressed or something. That's totally yeah. That's totally like you, you know exactly what I'm referring to with that one. Yeah. 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 Totally that's fake. It. That's it. If a person does come out and tell you, like, in private, take it seriously, because the odds are, by the fact that they're doing it in secret, 
that they mm. actually do suffer with it or are suffering with it. Or if they're spamming it on social media, there's probably... I'm not saying, like, there's there's not problems if you're doing it. That You might have some problems in the head. There might be something wrong with your life. You might need to do some things Oh, yeah, to... no, there probably is something wrong, but it, I wouldn't count it as out, outright depression. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, in some cases. But, yeah. like, you can normally tell if someone's faking or not if you've been around people who have actually gone through it or have gone through it yourself mm -hmm. you can normally tell yeah 100 percent that's it like depression is different to a degree for everyone like it because again like the stuff that causes it is it can be different as well yeah yeah, it's not all one thing that causes it. It's normally like a bunch of things that slowly wear it down. Definitely. Yeah, because. Yeah. What do you think about exercise with depression? Because a lot of different people say a lot of different things. Um. So with depression, for like it'll be hard to do this, but for the beginning section of it, like where you're still going through it. It'll be hard to do anything anyone suggests to you. But personally, from my experience, I do say to actually go out and do something, pick up a hobby, exercise a little bit. It'll be hard to get out there and actually do it because that's one of the big things depression is. Like, the, you don't have the motivation to do stuff. Yeah. Or, like, you'll find ways to avoid it. So I suggest pick up a hobby. Like, me personally, due to physical conditions, I struggle to exercise. So Which I is... picked up baking and cooking instead. That's good. That's as well a good. As, like other things. So, like it can be something simple, or it can be something like, but it's little things that add up for it. It's not like something big. Like you, it's not. There's not going to be something huge that you have to do that's going to fix you. It's a bunch of little things that add up. For yeah. Example, like. For, from just exercising to picking up a skill or doing something that relaxes you. It's all that. Yeah. What do you think so, about... Yeah. Oh, were you going to say something? Yeah, go on. Uh, what do you think about people who use depression as an excuse to be a tit to people? Uh, you have no excuse to do that. Even if you are depressed, it shouldn't be an excuse for you to get away with treating other people like a complete jackass. Like, the thing is, like, yes, depression makes you act weird, like, act weirdly, but it, it doesn't, like, it shouldn't be used as an excuse for, like, acting like a complete ass to everyone. Now, there are cases where, like, you can be more irritable with it, and you might lash out slightly more, and in that case, people, like, can be a bit understanding for that one, but it's not an excuse to be a complete dick to people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it shouldn't be used as a shield. Yeah, to, like, 100%. To get away with shit. I mean, there's so many people who are just like, they'll do something horrible or say something horrible and say, oh, it was my depression. It was my yeah, anxiety. Exactly. No, like, you don't, you don't use it as a shield. That's, like, no. Yeah. Because it, it's just not good. And the best way to say something like that is probably, it was all me, it was all my fault, all my actions, but, you yeah. know... Having... Like, if I've la like, when I've lashed out at people, because I'm not going to go and say I haven't when I was going through my depression, because I did. Mm. But I always apologised for it, and I never said, oh, it was my depression. Mm. All I said was, sorry, I've just been a bit more irritable lately. Yeah, that's, because, honestly, that is a million... Because that, that is true. That's a million times better than what I was going to say, because all I was going to say was, it's all me, but... The depression doesn't help, but your version's like 20 million times better, not gonna lie. Yeah, but it's because I am, I was more irritable. Yeah, it's the I'm truth, not yeah. Using a shield to say that, oh, it wasn't me, it was this. Yeah, it's the but, truth, man. Yeah, it, it's little things like that. Like, there's a lot of subtle things to it. What do you say to people who are like jealous of other people, like even their own friends or relations uh, or whatever? Or okay, so I'm not gonna say like don't be jealous because. You're very well welcome to be. But jealousy is one of those things like, it's okay to be jealous. Everyone gets jealous. Yeah, at but some point in their life. how you treat that jealousy as a thing. Like, if you're jealous to a point where you actually, like, try and make the other person's life miserable to get back at them, then no. Mm. Like, that's, that's, no. That's just being a dick. Yeah. Like, 
Jealousy is a horrible thing. Like, it, I can understand being jealous. I've been jealous before, people. I get you. Like, I get you being jealous though, because of all the crap you've had to go through. Like, honestly, yeah, it's unreal. Yeah, like I do look at people who are in a better situation than I have and haven't had to go through as much shit, and I do like think that, and yeah, despite that, take it for granted. But I don't act on anything. Like, I just like. I just put it aside as like, you know, I'm happy they've got things working out for them. Yeah, that's the best way to be. That is honestly the yeah. best way to be. I feel yeah. like people realise in their situation as well, because sometimes I've told some people, like some personal stuff, and they've said, man, you've been through a lot, but I'll say, man, I've been through nothing compared to some of these people, you know. But then those people yeah. I'm comparing myself to, they've been through nothing compared to like soldiers or people who've been shot or blown up, you know. A lot of it is, you will often look at your situation and you will compare other people's and think they haven't gone through as much or I haven't gone through as much, even when you have. Like, it's different situations affect different people. Like, yeah. no two people's situation are the same. That's even so when true. They're similar. Yeah. And it's looking at those situations and being like, okay, this person's gone through some shit. Yeah. I, like, I'll admit that. But my, like, but there's such, like, it's one of those. Yeah, you'll look at, most of them are not, if you're depressed, you'll look at your other people's situation and you'll think, I am, I'm not, what I'm going through is nothing compared to what they're going through. And you'll try and justify yourself with that. Yeah. To, like, be like, because, like, this is going to sound bad for a second, but people with depression, for the most part, won't seek out help. And their way for, mm. for justifying that is they'll look at other people like, well, I'm not, what I'm going through is not as bad as what they're going through. Yeah. So, like, so I like that. Mm. But it's, like, because even I do this, like, you've heard it, like, some of the stuff I've had to go through. I've told you some of the stuff I've had to go through. But even I still look at other people like, what I'm going through is not as bad as what they're going through. When yeah. It clearly is. It's 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 knowing when to admit your situation is bad and stop comparing it to other people. Yeah. What annoys me though sometimes is like if you tell some people some stuff and they're like, oh, what have you actually been through? And it's like, bro, I'm telling you this stuff. Come on, man. Like, what's your problem? You know. Yeah. You don't have to reveal yeah. everything to everyone, but like, you know, people should yeah. trust each other. If they're a good friend to someone, they should be like trusting each other. You know. Yeah. It, it's like it's like I was saying, like different people's situations vary, and the extent of how bad a situation is can completely be a one eighty from another person's situation. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I was just gonna say quickly though, there's like, ah, oh, my brain. Just, oh yeah, you said something really interesting to me ages ago. How if people with depression, real depression, if they're not getting help or getting diagnosed. Because I forgot to mention this earlier, it they'll either come to two choices: suicide or get help, and that's how you know someone. Oh yeah, okay. So this is gonna get a little grim, but it has to be talked about. So people who are going through actual depression, I always have to specify actual because again, there are people out there who fake it for attention or will act like they are when they're not. Um. So people going through actual depression. They won't seek help, no matter how you how much you tell them to, or what advice you give them. And the reason for that is, so they they will only seek help once they've come to a choice. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And this, like, so this is gonna, like I said, it's gonna sound, this is gonna be a little grim, but it's important. So, people going through depression will come to one of two choices. And that, like, and when they hit, like, the end of their thing, like, when they've hit, had, when they've had enough, and that is either you end it all to just stop the suffering, or you choose to get help. Yeah. And sadly, if you have friends who have depression, I, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you won't be able to help them until they've come to that decision themselves. Yeah. Until until they have come to that point, you can't help them. You can try and be there for them, like listen to them, and you can try and give them some advice, but you won't be able to help them fully until they've come out and have been and like told and told you like that like 
like it's normally like a cry of help. Yeah. Like, if they if they seek help, like because like when I was going through my first bout, uh, I'll specify this part later. Um, I I hit that choice and like so. My one was a slow burn for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and it eventually hit the point where for like the last three months before I came to my choice, I like was shutting down completely, like I was having major anxiety attacks constantly, oh, God. I wasn't talking to people, I was feeling empty inside, I was constantly feel filled with this feeling of sadness and regret. Uh, everything I did, I, like, used it to try and justify that I shouldn't live anymore, that I'm a horrible person. No matter what it was or how minor it was, if I if something bad was happening, I used it as justification to, that I shouldn't be around. And it, on the last, like, day where I actually made my choice, I actually was, like, full-on empty. Honestly. Inside. Like, the, the last couple of days before I'd come to my decision, I was actually planning my suicide. Like, I had, had a proper plan in place, the time, how I was going to do it. Like, I picked out a specific time so that I knew, like, that would cut down the least amount of time my family could try and stop me. Man. As well as I figured out how I could do it and everything. Don't and even know. This is how I know I was at the time of making my choice. On the day I had planned it, I was completely empty. I felt nothing. Don't and even the know. thing is, when you feel nothing at all, like you're completely numb, you can justify your actions a lot easier because you don't feel empathy or grief anymore. You you don't like you don't consider how badly it's going to hurt your family or your friends. You just because you feel nothing. Yeah. You are just completely empty inside, and you use that to get away with it. But oh. like before, I feel like. I, I, I had one more chance in the day to, like, go back, which, as you can tell by the fact I'm here, I did. And yeah. that was when my mom, like, came up to say goodnight for the last time of the day. She could tell something was wrong, but it's what she... So, my brother and my mom have both had to deal with it in the past, and they know that, like, until the person's ready to talk, they won't talk, and you can't force the two. But my mom could tell something was wrong, but she had to wait until I came out to tell her. No. And on the like the last time I got the speaker of the day, so when she was coming up to say goodnight, before she left my room, I um called her back over and I just unloaded everything. I told her how I was feeling, what has been happening, what I had planned to do and everything. And I, I think I talked for a good hour and I was just crying the entire time. Like all my emotions just came back because I finally unloaded what I was hiding. And from there, my mom got to work trying to get me help. Like, she got me into the doctors for some tablets, and the first chance she got, my brother and her were keeping close watch of me. They were checking me if I'd been self-harming, just in case. And that, you know what I mean? They, and they tried to get me into a counselor as soon as... And the thing is, a couple of days after I had come forward, so I, I, so I had planned it on a Friday, right? The following Thursday, I had another, like, scare, right? Like, which, it's good, like, it's bad when you have those, but at the same time, it's also good, because it got me a counsellor quicker, because I was clearly in a, ba in a very bad situation. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't even a week after I told my mom how I was feeling and told some of my friends how I was feeling that I had attempted again or was going to attempt again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it got me a counsellor quicker. And the thing is, like, you need to be at a certain point before you can get counselling as well. Because, like, so this is going to sound weird, but this is one of my favourite pieces of advice I give to people. To fix something, you have to admit that it's broken. You're often put off wanting to get a counsellor, even though you're on tablets and stuff, and you're clearly not, not right, you're clearly feeling bad. But, like, you, once you admit that something's wrong and that you want to fix it, you can get help properly, and then you can go, that's when you go to counselling and 
they start helping you work through it. You know what I mean? Man, Scott, I've got to say, bro, that is probably one of the best speeches. I know it wasn't a speech, but, like, honestly, I'm tearing up over here, man. That is one of the most amazing things I've ever heard anyone say on ever. Like, honestly, man. Like, the fact that you can talk about this and, you know, remain composed and just sort of, like... And the fact that you've got through it and come out on the other end is just nothing short of amazing and a miracle, bro. And uh, I mean yeah. this from the heart. Much uh, respect, man. Honestly, that was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, some advice I'm going to give for the people listening to this real quick. If you're going through something, you need to, like, so I'm going to give some advice to, like, help you guys a little bit. And it's just something I did. And it won't work for everybody. Like, I said, it's different situations, different things. But you want to try and get, like, surround, like, you want to surround yourself with people that you know will listen. Mm. You need you need to remove toxic people from your lot from your situation, even if it means like you have to give up a few friends. Because if you have someone toxic as a friend when you're going through this stuff, they'll make it worse. Yeah. Because if you try and open up to them and tell them, they're just gonna make fun of you or make it a joke. Yeah. I mean, I guarantee there'll probably be some people who are watching, and if they get to this point in the video, there'll probably be some of them who think. Oh, that person hasn't been through anything near as bad as I've been through. And, oh, they've got the easiest life. And, oh, what a wimp. What a wimp. And it's like, those people, just just ignore those people because they have no idea what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah, like, if you've got people like that, even if they're, like, close friends and that, you need to you need to get like get them out of your life, it's hard to say. Yeah. Like, because I, I actually had to give up some of my friends when I was going through this because they were toxic and I needed to... Like, I needed to get people I knew would support me. Yeah. One, there's some silver linings to depression. It's not entirely all bad. Mm -hmm. The main silver lining is you learn quickly who your real friends are. That's a great when point. When you're going through it. That is because such a great point. The people who are your real friends, once you come out and tell them, they'll support you, be there for you. They'll let, like They'll be there if you need to pull. You, you very quickly learn who your actual friends are. Yeah. And yeah, and the people who don't like, you need to get rid of them. I'm sorry. Like you, you should they, like they're not gonna help you in the situation you're in. Yeah. And when you're going through it, you need as much help as you get. Like you need people who are gonna be there and assist you. Hmm. Another thing I want to quickly say though, if if you manage to get through it and come out the other side, be like, and then it comes back. Don't feel bad because it it doesn't actually fully go away. You just get easier at handling it each time. Yeah. But it will come back eventually. But if you get through it once, it doesn't hit you as hard the second time because you know you've done it already. Yeah, it's like scars. Say if, I don't know, you have to have a brutal operation, there's a scar on your back. It'll look bad, really bad for a month or two. But then it fades, but it doesn't go away, but it does fade. Yeah, but like, the thing is, if it starts coming up again, you will you will find yourself repeating a bit of a pattern. Like, you'll have trouble talking to people again before you eventually come through and tell them. Yeah. But the thing is, you will actually come to the... You won't have to go to the decision this time, because I said you've gone through it before. But it just takes time to talk again. Hmm. But you, but you don't come to the decision a second time, unless it's really bad and you've got no one you can talk to again. Yeah. Because there are some people like that where even though they've gone through it once, they haven't got anyone they can talk to, and they, when it comes up again, they haven't got any way of venting it. Yeah, it's, it's got to be awful for people who don't have anyone to talk to. I just, as yeah, I say, there are some people who even their parents, like they can't even talk to their parents. Yeah, as I say, and, like those are people, the people that get it the worst because yeah. they have no one they can go to. Yeah, as I say, just reach out, just email the channel or. Join the Discord and message me privately, like, honestly, just Scott's in the Discord as well. I'm not trying to promote the Discord, I know this sounds mental, but if there's no one you can talk to, please just talk to us or go to therapy or just find someone you can talk to, like, because it's just really sad, to be honest. What what really gets under my skin, though, is when there's people out there who, I know, obviously, just because it might seem like they have everything doesn't make them happy, and that's usually the situation a lot of the time, but it's like... Some people just have...
just have so much given to them. And I'm not trying to be jealous. I've never tried places with anyone. But, like, it's so unfair when they just throw it all away for nothing and that they just, like, distance themselves and whatever. When they, But then whenever anyone tries to open up to them, they're just, like, not nice people, you know. Like, those people are just conf- a confusing, annoying mess, you know. Yeah. Like, there are, there are people who can go through a midlife crisis, and often when that happens, they will distance themselves oh. from people because they need to figure out who they are. Yeah, I suppose. Really tell who those are, like, when they're going through that, because, like, they will be do- picking up a bunch of things that they normally wouldn't have, wouldn't. Or they'll be doing a bunch of stuff they, that they normally wouldn't never have done before. Yeah. Because they're trying to figure out who they are. Mm. There's a reason it's called a midlife crisis. Yeah. It's because you start wondering if who you are is who you actually are. So you start trying to figure out who who it is that you are. 100%. <sighs> Sorry about the yawn. But yeah. That's all on my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was honestly so deep, man. Um, Next question then. Might be the final one. Um, Has Twitch helped you much? Because it gives you a routine, doesn't it, you know? Yeah, so for me, one of the things that's helped me through... Because I had a second bout, and I'm currently going through that second bout. I'm going to just be honest about now. But it's not hitting me as bad as it did my first time, because I said, I've gone through this already. I know the routine, and I I know how to combat it. I've beat it once before. But some of the things that have helped me through this one are um, I've learned to cook and bake, as I said. So I've picked up a skill, but also I've picked up Twitch, which has given me a routine. Yeah. The best one, like, so I said Twitch has helped me a lot because I set days I stream and I stick to those days and times. And I've done it consistently. Even on days where I've worked, I was like, I don't feel like streaming today. I have still sat down and done it. I'm not very big on on Twitch. Like, I haven't got a lot of viewers. I don't get a lot of viewers regularly. But I still do it consistently because it gives me something to do. And it's something consistent. Mm. That's something, honestly, I, I, again, I give to those who are, like, currently depressed or that get something that gives you a routine to, like, even if it's something small or, like, just something that gives you a bit of routine will help you out. Yeah. I mean? Definitely. Because one of the one of the biggest things to those going through depression is you but you you won't have the motivation to do anything, including like even hygiene. Like even that will seem like something you like you lose the motivation to do. Yeah, like a hassle. Yeah, like you you basically things you'll find is like if you don't have the motivation to sleep, and yet when you do sleep, you'll sleep in super late. Mm. because you don't have the motivation to get up like there's no reason for you to get up that is really and, trippy like, it, that is the main thing like you will you you'll find a lack of motivation to do anything even eat sometimes yeah like as i said during my bout i had massive problems of like i, I would go like ages without eating to point my family like, had, like would have to make me eat to a degree yeah. Even if it was only a little bit, because I wouldn't even have the motivation to do that. Hmm. And, like, so you need to get some routine. As, like, hopeless as you will feel and how bad the situation will feel, you need to do it. Yeah. And, yeah, like, that, that's the only way you're going to fix it and get, like, yourself mm. better is you need to make the steps yourself. No one else is going to do it for you. Totally, man. Um... So, why, why, what good experiences have you got out of Twitch then so far? Um, I have a lot of fun streaming. I've, like, it's just good sharing my gameplay and, like, talking to the people in chat, even if the people in chat are, like, just my friends. Yeah. It feels good, like, sharing my experiences on games. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch you play games, not gonna lie. Yeah, because it, it's, because... The thing is, a lot of funny shit can happen on games, and often or not, when it happens, you didn't record it. <laughs> and I said, it's good just to talk to the people in chat, like, hold conversations with them while I'm playing. And I will say, like, if you choose to pick up streaming, um, try and get people you stream with, because if, like, solo streaming is 
kind of difficult. Yeah, because you have to really... You have to, you have to be able to keep entertaining people for, like, two to three hours. Yeah. In case, even eight hours. And if you haven't got a lot of viewers, it's hard to do that because you can't just turn the chat and talk to the people there to entertain them. Yeah. So, like... So like it's easier to do it when you have a when you have a lot of followers because if you need something to like to do you just look at chat and answer questions there instead like mm. and boom you got it but if you're if you got a low viewer count then it like I suggest try and get some friends you stream with and like just use the banter from that yeah also always interact with chat never like try to ignore people if you can mm. like. That, that's what's going to get people coming back to your stream is how well you interact and how like friendly you are to chat like if you're a person who's really toxic to your chat like you're not you're going to scare off a lot of old viewers yeah like, um, just in general definitely well I think we can wrap up like nicely there I'm not even bullshitting now that was probably the best podcast I've ever done I've ever been in and ever you know been able to be in i'm not even lying that was amazing strength to like talk about this stuff you know yeah but like like you said like i've got a very good insight to this stuff yeah and have done and have had for a while well big thanks that you did this anyway bro no worries man it's like i said i'm i'm, I'm, I'm better at talking about this stuff now than i was so yeah. i can so i can do it and mm. I said, like, if my experiences can help someone else out, it's all the better. Then it means the world, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Like, even if it's, like, one person, if I know that I've helped them, then, mm. like, I, then I'm happy to do it. Yeah, man. Well, any any final messages or anything before I end it? Uh, let me see. I I think I have, I do have one. I don't remember. I just got to figure out how to, how to word it. Okay, go on then, bro. Just bear with me a second. Uh, okay, how do I just And of course I fucking lost it. <laughs> no, never mind. Never yeah. mind, man. Well um maybe if I do one about um you know, I don't know, maybe if you remember it you can message it me and I could read it out on one of the podcasts maybe or there's a yeah, bit of a I'll do that. But yeah, Anyway, I think we can end it there then. Thanks for watching and see ya. Bye.